Let's talk about rule 102 of section 10 of the Canadian Electrical Code. We're still in the grounding section of the Canadian Electrical Code and it's talking about the grounding electrodes um, themselves. And it, uh, the, this section says that the electrodes can consist of manufactured grounding electrons that you, electrodes that you can buy, field assembled grounding electrodes that you can kind of cobble together out of your own material, or in situ grounding electrodes forming part of an existing infrastructure. And this is interesting because all parts of the grounding and bonding system can be controlled by careful design and material selection, except when you get to the actual connection in the earth where you can field assemble something or use something that's there. Uh, but you have to make sure that it's a quality and reliable connection whether you have bought it or you found something or you are going to use some of the um, existing infrastructure. Quality means that even if you have found it in existing in infrastructure or it's um, something you have made, it has to be reliable. And that depends on a bunch of factors. For example, the resistance of the earth of which the building stands, the moisture content of the earth to make a better connection, and the grounding electrodes uh, that are placed in the earth. So uh, you need to, the installer has to make sure that they determine the best possible electrode system that is consistent with the requirements of any given, um, given uh, installation. So we must remember that a high voltage system can deliver considerable current through that ground path. Which can, which can also raise um, the voltage of the earth. Uh, and it can raise the voltage of the earth um, to, 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 to dangerous levels if, to anybody standing in the vicinity of a ground fault. So for systems like that, that are very high voltage, a much more complicated grounding and electro system is required. And those are in uh, section 36, because it's a special consideration. Uh, so some of the um, in situ grounding electrodes that you could be using are buried metal water pipes or a metal object or a device buried in or driven into the ground that makes intimate contact with the earth. A grounding conductor is then electrically and mechanically connected to it. Several rule one recognizes these three types of electrodes. The manufactured ones are usually rods or plates. Uh, they're, they're manufactured according to a CSA section, uh, for, to a CSA standard. The field assembled electrodes uh, are often manufactured on site using readily available materials like bare copper conductors, um, and they're, they're directly buried or encased inside some concrete foundations or footings. And what the code means by in situ grounding electrodes are ones that are part of the building's infrastructure that there are that are also, of course, in contact with the earth, such as a, a, like a water piping system, um, some uh, reinforcement, some steel reinforcement in a concrete slab, um, iron pilings, etc. Uh, it'll have to have the same the same surface area in contact with the earth at 600 millimeters below finished grade um, as the manufactured ground electrode would have had. Uh, section two of rule 102 says that manufactured grounding electrodes shall, in the case of a rod grounding electrode, consist of two rod electrodes that are not spaced more than three meters apart. So those rod electrodes have to be at least two manufactured electrodes, at least three meters, uh, sorry, at least three meters long, and also driven into the earth to their full length and space no longer than three meters apart. So they have to be three meters long. They need to be driven all the way into the earth and space not less than three meters apart. This is so that they don't interfere with each other and create a uh, current in the other one. Uh, so they also have to be bonded together. So they uh, interconnected with grounding conductor sized. Um, this means they have to be bonded together. 
Um, item B says that a chemically charged rod electrode type of manufactured grounding electrode has to be installed to the full length of the rod. Item C says that for plate type electrodes, the electrodes must have an exterior surface area of at least 0.2 meters squared. That's also according to a CSA standard. In con that it, and all of that is in contact with the soil and they must be buried at least 600 millimeters below grade surface, below surface grade. They must be encased with, or they must be encased within the bottom of a 50 millimeter concrete foundation footing that is in direct contact with the earth with the concrete having an exterior surface of at least 0.4 meters squared and the buried depth no longer than 600 meters below finished grade. That's for the plate electrodes. But sub rule three talks about a field assembled grounding electrode that you might make out of some material that you have on hand. If you make a field assembled grounding electrode, then it, you will probably use bare copper conductor in, that is encased in a concrete fitting in direct contact with the earth, the bare conductor has to be sized in according with a table, table 43. And it can be no less than six meters in length, sized in accordance with table 43. And it has to be buried at least 600 millimeters below the surface. Now, subsection four says when a bare copper uh, conductor is, um, when a bare copper conductor is, um, uh, is buried into an in-situ electrode um, that is not considered electrical um, equipment. So for example, a pipe um, uh, or a, another, you know, a, a steel line, then the bare copper conductor must be sized in accordance with table 43 again, um, and it can be no lot less than six meters long, and it has to be um, no less than um, 600 millimeters below grade again. Uh, sub rule, uh, this in situ grounding electrode that is provided by the building's infrastructure, such as a water piping system, um, metallic reinforced concrete slab, et cetera, uh, also have to be 600 millimeters below the surface. And this minimum surface area has to be the same as that of a grounded electrode, which is a 0.2 meters squared. All right, so as an example, if you're gonna use um, uh, like some steel, you're, it has to be below 600, and the whole surface area below 600 meters has to be no less than 0.2 meters squared. Sub rule five, what does that say? Where the local conditions such as rock or permafrost prevents the grounding electrode from being installed at that burial depth, the lesser acceptable depth might be, um, might be acceptable but yet in this case, you have to make sure that your local inspection authority is going to make the final determination about what the most appropriate depth would be in that case.